Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Tip Talk. I'm Sarah Walworth. I'm Christina McGrath, and we are Knitting Tech Editors. Here on Tech Tip Talk, we answer your questions about tech editing, knitting design, and knitting pattern writing. We invite you now to put any questions you have for us into the chat box, and we'll do our best to answer them during this broadcast. This month, we're being joined by Serena Granger, who is a tech editor and a grader who has a background in like professional interior design and construction project management. And she does editing for um, podcasts and publications. And we've known her in our community for a while online and love the things she always has to say. So we're really excited to have her on here today to talk to us live and get to ask her questions. So, all right, let's bring her in. Okay, let me see if I can do this. And oh, nope. And <laughs> center stage. Hi, Serena. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. Oh, thank you for asking me. It's super sweet. It's a lot of fun. We're super excited to have you. Um, I think you might be our first Canadian guest. So, Ooh, okay, that's exciting. <laughs> so, welcome to Tech Tip Talk. Um, so before we get started, uh, tell us where you're calling in from. Uh, I am in Calgary, which is in Alberta. It's in Western Canada. We're in the prairies, but we're also near the mountains. So uh, I'm about an hour from Banff. Um, it's dry and cold. It's a little bit like Denver from a mm -hmm. climate perspective. Um, English speaking, not French speaking. Oh, we have the stampede. Do people know what the stampede yeah, is? Yeah, I know. I know exactly what it is. The Calgary stampede. So like yeah. rodeo and cowboys and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, that's kind of us. That's Because I, I live I in horse country in Texas, yeah. so I totally know what the stampede is. Bull riding and rodeos and calf roping and all that stuff. When you're in elementary school, they're like, this is who we are. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. We're going to start right into some questions. And, Great. Um, and to our audience that's joining us live, please feel free to throw your questions into the chat to, if you have anything for Serena. I have a burning question I've been dying to know. Okay. Your Instagram <laughs> name is dressed like an onion. How come? What does it mean? Uh, in interior design school, we had uh, an instructor who's really, really good at drawing. She was just the most beautiful, fantastic, like she could sketch anything. And so she'd take us out around the city to draw buildings with our sketchbooks and our charcoals and our pencils. And it would be on the list of what to do when you got ready, you know, tomorrow we're going drawing. So dress like an onion, bring your sketchbook and we'll see you on the corner of this street. And it kind of stuck in my head, but she would always say it. She was, I believe she was Polish. So in a thick accent, she would say, dress like an onion. And we'd be like, oh, oh, oh what does that mean? But um, a few months ago, I posted something. Um, and it was in the fall. And I was like, okay, you know, we're all battening down. Pandemic's coming again. All this stuff is coming. I said, I'm going to be dressed like an onion. I'm going to be knitting and I'm going to be inside my house. Just like that's, you know, batten down the hatches. And it kind of stuck in my head again. And that was 15 years after I had first heard it. Um, and I liked it. I just liked the sound of it. And it made sense. We, we deal with garments. We don't, it's not necessarily knitting. It's not necessarily just food. It's not necessarily just tech editing or crochet or yarn or wool or sheep. We kind of do everything, right? I mean, as tech editors, we think about math and we think about art and we get, but it's all of those things. And I didn't want a name that was my name. Um, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes we want to hide. Sometimes we want to be famous. Sometimes we want to be anonymous. So I think that kind of encapsulated everything. I've changed my name a couple of times on Instagram. Um, you know, building a business, you kind of think, oh, I want everyone to know who I am, but I don't want them to know who my kids are, or I don't want them to know who, you know, I like blue cheese this week. I might not like it next week. It has nothing to do with anything. Right. So it kind of stuck. It was, it, it was an iteration that stuck. I love it. Well, yeah, because we it. all dress in layers anyways, a lot of times yeah. through certain seasons, yeah. or we try to pile on as many 
knit and crochet layers, yeah. handmade, yeah. <laughs> handmade layers yeah. as we can. <laughs> and it's a little bit like Shrek, right? Doesn't Donkey say an, an ogre has layers, right? Oh, I mean, right. it's a little bit like that too. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. And I think we're all learning as uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs, we're all learning kind of, it kind of makes us a layered person. We're always wearing different hats in our business. We're always trying to do different things and be all of it but in layers. <laughs> well, and, and you know, you do sometimes get the question, do you edit socks or shawls or can you do this? And I think from what I've seen of tech editors, um, we don't usually say no. We don't usually say, I don't know anything about that. We usually right. say, you know what? That's kind of cool. I want to learn about that. Or I know someone who knows about that or let's figure it out together and go there. I don't think there's very often that we're like, you know what, I will not do a pearl stitch. I like, we don't do that. We don't say no. No, I think you've, you've nailed it. That is a, that kind of encapsulates the kind of persona that we have. We're like, Oh, I can figure that out. Or well, let's figure that out you have to say no for some reason. You've oh, for sure. It a list of like references and people and editors to give yeah. them as um as resources you know what i mean but it's still a problem that we'll solve part of for them right, right? we won't right. be like um i'm just going to ignore you completely we'll be like you know if you do these seven things and these books and like we never just leave them no no, no you're totally it's, right it's not possible so no. i don't know where how i got there but I love it. <laughs> I love how you got there because that's really who we are. We're helpers. Right. We're, we're yeah. Who, we are people who problem solve, but we're not going to like leave you out in the lurch if we can't figure it out. So, yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started working in the knitting industry. Um, uh, well, I... <sighs> I've been knitting for a long time. I've been crocheting for a long time. I've, I'm just crafty. We didn't have iPhones and iPads and like control of what was on TV. I grew up in the 80s. Um, we did stuff with our hands, right? I was a crafty kid. That's just what I did. But um, my very first test knit was in 2012 and it was a baby sweater. And it was this... Uh, helping mentality, right? Like, oh, okay, you need someone to help you. I will help you. I can knit. I can do this. I didn't, I didn't do a gauge swatch. I didn't use the right needles. I made a baby garment for a baby. I don't know any babies. It was just like, okay, I will help you. This is, and I, I mean, I think that's where I started. Uh, I had the enthusiasm. I had the skills, but I didn't really, I don't know. It was, it was where I started. So, um, and then eventually I started doing more test knitting and it was like a competition or a challenge with myself, right? Like, oh, I found an error here and an error here. And I'm, I'm being helpful because I, I found 10 spelling mistakes or this, <laughs> you know, they're missing. I, it was like a little game that I played with myself. And then eventually I was like, okay, maybe I should do this is serious. I can read a knitting pattern. I can do it in five minutes. I don't need to knit the whole thing. I can be like, you know, there are some things that you could uh, look at. So I would start sending out little emails, tiny little, you know, I'd hey. circle a bunch of stuff on a PDF and say, hey, uh, you didn't ask for this, but this is who I am. So here's a little a little bit of advice and a little bit of help. And one of the people that I helped, it was actually a pattern in French. And I sent off, you know, these are a little bit of uh, English tips from a Canadian English speaker. I, ha I have some French, I have some English, try and do these things. And I'm still working with her and I've known her forever. But it was actually that one of the designers said, you know, you should actually, you should ask for money for this. You should, you should do this. You should charge for this. You shouldn't do this for free. So yeah. that's kind of the hill that I rolled down. <laughs> I, I totally love it. Because you were tech editing, it like you fell into it. It's part of your personality. to Yeah. Do, and you just reached out there and got started. That's wonderful. And it is a lot like drawings and buildings and construction, right? So you have a, it, well, they used to be blueprints, but like a huge sheet of drawings and you get your red pen and you'd edit it just like, you edit a book or a document or anything. 
So right. it was just, it just seemed natural. It's like once you know the language of a thing, whether it's construction yes. or a knitting pattern or a yes. word, you can edit it and make, you know. And it is totally a language. Have that attention to detail. It totally is. And these independent knitting patterns are fascinating because each one is its own language, right? Each designer has their own dictionary and their own language and their own cadence. Yeah. It's all completely unique. Right. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun because it is puzzle solving in a spatial engineering coding kind of way. Totally. Completely. So do you edit knit or crochet or both? And like, Just, what do you edit? Because um, I saw, you know, you're editing a podcast now too. Yeah. So that's something new because I like volunteering for things and I like helping and I just keep doing it and I need to stop. So I don't have any test knits right now. I have none, um, but I edit mostly knitting patterns. I think I could do crochet, but I haven't done crochet because I've been crocheting as long as I've knit. Um, I don't understand the drawings, like the sketches for crochet. Um, Those yeah. are fascinating to me. I could right. probably knit to, I mean, I could probably work to one, but I haven't done it yet. Um, so yeah, mostly knitting. And then, so what's your specialty? What do you love to edit in knitting and why? I am a relationship editor. So I love editing for, for my, for certain people, right? I mean, if, if Lindsay asks me to knit something, I'm, I'm asking me to edit something, I'm going to edit it and I'm probably going to love it and we'll work through it and talk about it and build the language together. But that is um, great. I've never heard that like put that way before um, because like generally I don't like to edit socks, but if this woman I know well and have been working with forever and know her patterns back in front of designing a sock, I'm going to edit it. That's right. Like I never thought of it that way. That's really interesting. You wouldn't say no. You wouldn't say, you know, Serena edited 80 socks last year. You should give it to her. You'd say, okay, of like I, I won't love it as much as something else, but yeah, we're, we're going to do it. So I think well, that's what it's more client, about. My oldest client, like, she she struggles with, like, scheduling yes. you know, specifically or whatever. But no matter what she sends me, it's not stressful or that's right. in the same way as newer. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's so cool. Yeah. I never heard of that. Okay, sorry. Totally. No, but it makes a ton of sense, right? Because it's like, I can do this and we can, I, it's a little bit like, um, when I used to work in interior design, I did schools and hospitals and airports i did public buildings i didn't and uh i didn't do like a car dealership or like a penthouse apartment for a billionaire who's going to live there one day a week i did like a classroom for elementary school students you know they're going to use it you know what they need you want everything to work for them like this is going to sound really terrible but like they deserve a space that's made for them properly yes. You yeah. know what I mean? As opposed to someone who's like, oh, I need a $8 million kitchen. You don't, you don't need that. Like these kids need enough bathrooms. They need sinks. You know, they need a floor that they're not going to slip on. Like it's just, um, it's easier to work for someone whose work you respect, who respects you, who you can communicate with. You, you understand each other. You understand each other's schedules, right? Like if I need a day, that person's going to be like, that's fine. I, I I have this deadline, but we can make it work, right? They they You work together for your end product as opposed to, I need you to go and do this for me and you have 30 minutes and I'm going to pay you $20 or whatever. I don't know. I kind of got off track there again, but. Um, no, I think this is valuable because I it's don't. Work that, it's work that I want to do, right? Right. And if it's work that you want to do, then there is a value in building a good relationship relationship even if it's more professional maybe it's not friendship all the time but yeah and that's fine yeah with your client so that you and the ultimate result is a better product right and we've talked about this before not in this not in the context of like what's your specialty and what you like to edit but i love this connection to that um but we've talked a lot about the relationship you have with your tech editor it needs to work you know, you need to work well together or it's not going to be, be um, maybe as successful and your patterns maybe won't be as good. Like, 
Yeah, you know, and all I think the designers it's... you work with make you better, just like you make them better when you have that good relationship and you work well together. 100%, 100%. Well, and then you also need to feel comfortable giving and receiving feedback, right? Which is hard. Super hard. <laughs> hard <laughs> feedback is hard if you're used to performing at a certain level which we all are we're all used to who we are and when someone comes and says you know this wasn't working that means that wasn't working it doesn't mean i wasn't working and no, it doesn't hard. matter i mean i still might hear it and be like they don't like me we're not friends i thought we were cool like whatever we need to be able to give and receive feedback respectfully which right. is what which is what this is completely right i mean if you're editing five patterns in a week and you got your red pen out and you're zipping through everything you might not have time to say please and thank you or like use the correct words that that person feels heard and respected and seen if they're a new customer right where an old customer would be like oh serena's busy right it's not that she hates me it's just that she she just crossed it out it's 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 not like an angry ex it's just an ex Right. Yeah. Right. And we talk a lot about uh, forming your queries or your comments in a way yes. that's like, well, yeah. this could be this could be done differently. This is what your knitter's going to think. They're going to be confused, giving them the perspective that it's outside of them. It's not attacking them, but it's yeah. giving them some valuable information that they might not have thought of. Well, and actually something else. Sorry, I cut you off, Christina. No, no go ahead. Or, um, but something like, I, I do that too. And the way I ask the question kind of passively, softly, like we're kind of trying to lead the knitter, right? Or the designer, we're kind of leading them to see the problem that we've seen or the issue that we've seen. Instead of saying, this is wrong. We're like, don't you think it would be interesting if, and it's not that we misunderstood, it's that we can kind of jump ahead and guess how someone might understand it, right? And so sometimes when I do that, you can feel that they've understood that, oh, Serena doesn't know what I'm talking about. She's never done this before. It's like, no, I have done it before, but I want you to see that some people might not have ever right. done a backward loop cast on or whatever, right? Like whatever little shorthand that you might have used, you need to be a little more explicit and clearer to get everyone in the boat boat but right. yeah yeah have you thought about exactly jen. Yeah, exactly jen says have you thought about, have you thought about the smiley that? face emotionally right, right? A lot or like or like a little super passive question mark which i mean that doesn't get anyone what anywhere am I missing? <laughs> yeah that's my favorite phrase I, am i missing something here <laughs> this is what i see is happening and that's am right. i missing because a lot of times it is the case their intention is to go a direction that I'm not understanding, but they didn't communicate it in that way. So it ended up on another, another place. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, there is a sleeve missing, like wait, seriously. <laughs> yeah. No, that you're like, well, what happened? What happened? Yeah. I, I've had that where there was like a whole <laughs> left front, no instructions. No, where it's gone. Is, does the sweater not have a left front? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It happens, man. It happens. It's like this huge, enormous pattern, all these pages, all these moving parts. I mean, it happens. That's what we were for, right? I mean, so many things can get missed. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you have these test knitters who are geniuses and who can knit something super quick, but they don't, they'll, they'll miss something like that because they'll assume, I understand what you were trying to say. Yep. Yeah. And they're, and they're, and, and they're only working like one size. Yeah, I think they're, you know, not always because they're working the one size, they're not paying attention to the relationships between all the other sizes or everything that's happening in the pattern as a whole. And yeah, that happens a lot. It happens to me as a knitter, you know, you know what they mean. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know what they mean and you have to take some time to figure it out. But if you, and so lots, you, you know, you don't comment on it, you know? Yes. Yes. The, the other thing I think happens also with testers, and maybe you can speak a little bit about because you've done 10 years of testing other people's patterns. Yeah. If, you, if you're always testing for the same person, you get used to their language. You get yeah. used to how they do things, and then you stop seeing some of the stuff. Well, and you don't know if they've changed it, right? They might have gone in and edited something or added something, 
and you don't bother looking at it because you looked at it last time, mm. right? It's their copy paste. This is how you do it. And you don't look at it. I, so, I look at patterns on my phone. I don't print anything, oh. but if I printed it, I'm sure there would be a lot more like when I'm knitting, when I'm knitting, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm working on it for real, then, then I'll be printing it. But. Yeah. So Sorry. maybe this leads into this kind of question. What errors do you come across most while you're editing? Like, what do you find that designers tend to make over and over again? It is just the little things like missing, missing needles or um, missing gauge, missing gauge. That's the big one. Never mind. We'll just gauge is never. It's not in there. There's a, <laughs> what happened? There's a stocking at gauge, but the whole thing is done in a texture and a rib. Oh. Like, what's the point? No, no stocking. Or, at gauge. or, or there's like three different needles, and the gauge is on one of them on stock. It like it's it's gauge, and they don't tell you what it's needle gauge. for gauge. I don't know. Oh. I love it's gauge. hard. Gauge is really, really hard. I don't like doing a gauge swatch. If I'm knitting something for me, I will not knit a gauge swatch. I definitely will not because I know, I know what makes sense when I'm knitting and I'm not afraid to frog and I will frog and that's my schedule and that's fine. But um, even knowing how to measure gauge is oh, a yeah huge it's huge like i have to draw a picture and i will draw a picture like i need you to measure from here to here we know how many rows it is because it's written in the pattern just tell me what dimension this is and i can figure it out and like yeah and even the pictures <laughs> oh yeah gauge 100 percent gauge yeah i mean and even if you don't like to swatch that's totally cool like it's the knitter's choice right but that information being correct on the pattern is necessary. <laughs> it has to be correct. Yeah. Even if the knitter's not going to knit a swatch, they still yeah. need to know the, the dimensions of what they're going to be making. And you know what? You have to measure it perpendicular to your stitches. It can't be like a diagonal. Like you can't just lay a ruler on a sweater right. at an angle and be like, take a picture and, and fill your boots, Serena. Like you can't do that. That doesn't it, help anybody. It, it's even trickier when stuff's on the bias <laughs> or stuff is multiple stitch patterns. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Gauge is the, probably the trickiest thing that I've come across in tech editing because I'll compare the gauge to the finished measurements and they don't, they don't go. And, and for grading. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Right? Like, how did you get that? That that's, that's fine. And I can extrapolate, but which one? like mm -hmm. the finished measurements or the gauge because they don't match at yeah. all yeah exactly and they're yeah. like but, it, but look look it looks good on me it worked <laughs> yeah but but this number doesn't mean anything right yeah exactly. yeah i think that, I, I think we there like there can't be enough reminding like out there about how important it is to measure gauge prop like if you if you if you if if you're measuring your gauge wrong and you're designing with the wrong gauge that doesn't match your sample, just everything's going to be wrong for everyone who works with your pattern. hundred percent. So yeah. It's so important. And so like, we just can't have enough reminders out there of like make big, big swatches measure with a stick, you know, like, Oh my God. And it's counting. Like I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's not math. Gauges are not math. Gauges is that's counting. That's like grade one. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. You're empowered. You can count. I believe in you. Right? I love it. Right? right? I mean, we okay. Need, yeah. We need this. We need to. We need like a post that says that you can count. I believe in you. I, can, I believe in you. Well, I was wondering if you could think of a way that to compare that to what you've done in interior design and construction management. If you don't have gauge and knitting correct, then it's like that foundation that everything else is going to be wrong. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> but I mean, we all have kitchens, right? I mean, you know how big it is. You know where the walls are. The walls don't move. The structure doesn't move. The floor doesn't move and the ceiling doesn't move. And it doesn't matter how big your, your dishwasher is one size. Most dishwashers are one size. Stove is one size. Your cabinets have to fit. 
the walls are always going to be crooked. Like you need to measure things. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going, but you, I just, love just, it. you just need to measure it. I love it. You can't force it. Yeah. Right. Like it's not going to. It's really good. And, and very it's, good. Well, I mean, I mean, we it's could think about like, work. like Ross moving a, a, what is it? A sofa up a stairwell. Like it just, it's not going to fit. It's not going to fit. It doesn't matter how much hope and joy and like enthusiasm you have. If it's not going to fit, it's not going to fit. It's not going to work. And you it. won't wear it. I mean, I don't know. You, we all have stuff we knit that we will not wear or we sewed or we quilted like that's great but i will not wear it and our kids won't wear them or your husbands won't wear them like it's okay you can you can knit for the joy of knitting but it feels so much better when somebody wears something that you made for them <laughs> yes and it works and yeah. it works and they love it and they wear it more than once instead of like on Mother's Day, and they smile at you, and you're like, yeah, I know. I know you hate it. It's fine. <laughs> Did that happen in your house, Serena? <laughs> no, because I am a good knitter, and they will wear what I gave them. No, they wear their stuff. My kids, my kids grew up with stuff that was made for them, and so now they give me orders, right? I mean, they all, yeah. like, yeah. it's yeah. terrible. Oh it's God. really bad. Like, Halloween <laughs> is one thing, but, like, okay, mom, I need a new pair of socks or I need this sweater. And it's like, oh, it's fine. Mom will make it. She's got time. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> On demand. Well, um, thank you for joining us, everyone, live. Uh, we just want to let you know if you have a question for Serena, please throw it into the comments and we'll be sure to ask her. What's our next question, Christina? What advice would you give to a designer just starting out? Like, is it measure gauge or is there something else that... <laughs> that you think someone just beginning what do they need to know right so this is a hard one because there's two parts to it right like just do it just go for it and do it but also take your time and give yourself time and give your tech editor time and your test knitters time don't expect that it's just gonna oh it's perfect it's wonderful i things take time you need to look at every single part of it and you need to be patient with yourself and willing to try different things or see it differently. Um, and know that not everybody will understand your knit language right away because right. you've been doing it a certain way and you have cast ons that you love and tools that you love, but people do things differently. I hate magic loop. I hate it. I see a <laughs> I just don't like it, but I don't like when my DPNs fall out either. Like, it just makes me angry. But if you love Magic Loop, that's awesome. But not everybody will, and it's okay. It's okay. So take your time. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Do we need more sock designers? Maybe. Are we going to get them? Definitely. I don't know. Uh, everyone's doing it go for it yeah go for it so, like, take your time but don't be afraid of it like yeah yes and don't be afraid to revisit your patterns i guess because lots of people are doing that too right yeah. that happens a lot um yeah i don't know i think having a style guide is really important i don't know if that's something i don't know if that's something that a first time designer has to do but it's something that a first time designer should think about maybe you know maybe a really good piece of advice is after you've published like in a month or two go back right. and look at it and see how it looks with like a couple of nights of sleep under your under your belt <laughs> exactly yeah. and if you right? can do that before you publish it's even better <laughs> yeah yeah like what do you like about it what what do you think oh i wish i would have done that differently or mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Because we can revise patterns if they're published digitally. Yeah. Well, in, in construction, they call it like a post-occupancy review, right? So after people have moved in, in a year, you go back with your architect and your mechanical engineer and you like walk around and see all the decisions that we made. Did they work? Did they work? 
Oh. Are people using that space how we expected them to? Has that become a storage room and it was a swimming pool or, you know what I mean? Because that happens, right? You move into a house and you think, this is awesome. I love all of this. And then that room, which you think was going to be the baby's room, isn't. Or, you know, that every closet is a junk closet. I mean, that's just the way it is. But yeah, did we use it the way we thought we would? And what would we have done better? And what thing did we like agonize over forever? Was it worth it? Right. Yeah. Love this. That's yeah. Right. That is a gem. <laughs> because so, uh, we're not dealing with physical books most of the time. We're dealing with right. patterns. So you can go in and you can. You sure can. Turn you that cluttered easily. junk closet into something that's actually useful for the for your customers. Well, and, and you know, it kind of reminds everyone that you're still there, right? Like, here's yeah. an update. I've done it in German. And everyone's like, oh, I wonder what Serena's done this week. Does she have something? Like, that's kind of a little poke poke. But right. Yeah. yeah. So we did get a question from Jen who asks, I'm curious to hear about what the differences you may see between tech editing for a publication like Radical Threads yeah. versus for independent design. So it's the, um, the guidelines and the language, right? So the magazine has a language that the designs have to uh, fit to. And if you're an independent designer, you come up with your own language. If you want knit to be K with a capital K or a small K, that's up to you. If you want it to be like your charts, um, the symbols on a chart, that's totally up to you. If you're an independent designer, they could be happy faces and smiles and flowers or whatever you want, right? I mean, that's cool. I see a lot of sewing patterns. They say, um, get your favorite cup of tea and turn on your music and heat up your iron and let's go. And they like, they have these style things that are really fascinating and interesting. So in a publication, in a magazine or a book for a big publisher, they have all of that that you have to conform to. So that's kind of interesting when you have to take six designers and make them fit this one, thing. fit this one publication. So it's kind of a, it's coming at the the problem from a different angle, which is kind of interesting. Do you get pushback from designers who are like, wait, that you changed my pattern because you were conforming it to style? Yes. How do you handle it? I want to hear because I have the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> but well, but it is what it is, right? Like yeah. this is the style. This is the style. They hired you to do the pattern. If I, I didn't come up with the style guide, I didn't come up with the abbreviations. If I did, we could say, well, what do you like? We can talk about it for sure. Everything is live and everything changes. Like you said, there's a difference between something that's digital and something that's printed on paper. You can change those things. Um, yeah, it is what it is. I, I, to, I, I don't know what I like so better. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I like better. I mean, I think even if we look at Craft Yarn Council has abbreviations, and this magazine is using some of those abbreviations, but not all of them. I mean, it, there's not, everything's not captured in there. All of right. the, so we get to come up with our own, which is kind of exciting. Um, I, I but really, people have to understand what you're saying too, right? Exactly. And I found that some designers actually, having that, going back to that relationship issue, when you have a good relationship with the designers, sometimes they can improve the publication. Like they'll make suggestions like, hey, mm -hmm. maybe it would be better this way. And a style guide is always a work in progress, even yeah. for a publication. Yeah. So there, again, it's like curating that relationship between yeah. the publication, the designers and everything to make it better. And we always learn, we're always learning and we're always getting better, right? I mean, we can talk about when I worked with, uh, there was a magazine never never published an issue but i worked with them for a little bit um and one of the publishers had an issue with a cast on and the name of a cast on it was a political not a i'm gonna call it a political reason it's a bad name it's a bad name for a cast on are we talking about the chinese waitress cast no, on? no no we're talking about okay. we're talking about kitchener stitch we're talking oh, about one? grafting hmm. kitchener stitch kitchener Both stitch People know what that is. That's not a great word. And if you want to know why it's not a great word, you can Google who he is. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give you that information for free. But if you have been working 
with templates for five years or 10 years, and then you finish a toe in a certain way and you say, Kitchener stitch the end, wash and block, lay flat to dry, enjoy your socks. That's at the bottom, like your copy paste uh, email signature. You can change that. Yes, it doesn't have to be that, but you might not have even thought about it because you don't need to, right? This is how I end a sock. This is how I end a sock pattern, right? But you, you know, I'll change these textures and then we'll end the sock with my typical toe. And it said Kitchener stitch for 50 pairs of socks, but it doesn't have to anymore. Mm -hmm. You can change graft. it. What's wrong you with that? You can graft? change it. Graft is great. Graft is wonderful. Graft is neutral. It doesn't have all of that baggage behind it. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, we have knitters that have been knitting for 20 years, but we have knitters that have been knitting for six months mm -hmm. and we don't need to teach them bad words. Yeah. Well, well, and isn't graft like the actual action that's happening? Right. I mean, does, right. does it need a person's name? It's not a big deal, right? It? So yeah. Uh, I'm all, I'm on a certain bandwagon with refining some of the terminology that we've come yeah. into that isn't helpful. That Little doesn't things like that. And also we have global audiences, right? I mean, because it's not about getting a book from a store anymore. Anybody could read that pattern. And I would love to sell that pattern to everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure most, most designers also would like that. So let's make them friendly for everybody yeah it's the way that like this thinking that just because it's the way something's always been done or because it's traditional means that it's right and it doesn't you know just because it's always been done that way doesn't mean it has to always continue to be done that way or that it's the right thing yeah you know yeah. exactly exactly um okay what's our next question what, um, well too. what what would you like to see change in our industry we keep leading into these questions without even, yes, not even trying <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think I, I'm trying to remember you sent me these questions and I answered them because that's who I am. I jump on my emails. I'm terrible at those little email notifications that pop up because I'll jump onto a new problem. I'm like a, you know, squirrel kind of person. But um, uh, what do I want to see change? I don't think I don't think I have the power to make anything change in this industry. So I, I don't think I'm going to answer this question. I know what I can change for myself and I know how I would like to conduct myself and I know how I'd like the people I work with to behave and, and treat me. And that's, that's where I'm going to stop with that. And empower everybody to measure gauge properly. <laughs> where are the impacts going to get made? They'll just keep getting it. the email question, the little passive question mark. What's happening here? <laughs> What's happening here? What's happening here? <laughs> what is, which gauge do you want to use? For which the base one is, your which one is this? Yeah, I don't know. So what are you excited about now, Serena? What are you working on? I went to a fabric and yarn sale a few weekends ago and I picked up a second knitting machine. I don't need two knitting machines. Wow. I also, I have a spinning wheel. I'm super excited to learn how to use that. I know, I know, Sarah. Wow. So are you, did you do drop spindle? I, I, I have, it. okay, so I have two, I have a drop spindle and I have a spinning wheel. I don't know how to use either of them. I have a friend from junior high whose mom was an artist and had a spinning wheel built for her. And she was moving and she was like, does anyone want this spinning wheel? Oh my gosh. And I was like, I live three provinces away. I want that spinning wheel. You and so somehow, spin. yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that exciting? It is exciting because handmade spinning wheels are a oh, treasure. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. they are something that can be an heirloom. And I don't know how to spin. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Well, it helps to have there's good so much to work. know too. Like know. there's so much. I mean, I was really intrigued by spinning um, many. This years doesn't ago. usually, I don't know this, this is driving me bananas. I want you all to know <laughs> if it's driving <laughs> you bananas, it's driving me bananas. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Oh God. <laughs> it's part, part of having <laughs> the curly hair. Oh God. Uh, but, yeah. So spinning, I'm super excited. There's a lot to know. And like spinning wheels, um, 
th there's so many parts that have to work correctly together yeah. to get it to do what it's supposed to do. You know, yeah, I was yeah. a little bit overwhelmed and I think that's why I stuck with the drop spindle and kind of abandoned my plan of a spinning wheel because the more I learned about spinning on a spinning wheel and what kind of wheel I might want and what it, I was like, I can't. It's a lot. There's it's no a way, lot. Right. Yeah. But you know what I love though, is I pulled it up and I put it in front of the couch and I kind of played with it. And then when the kids come home and they're sitting in front, they're sitting on the couch and they're like pedaling. They're making yeah. it go. They have not been interested in knitting. They are not interested yes. in sewing. They are not interested in quilting, but they're somehow drawn and the spinning, like they'll uh -huh. just be I see what you did there. You said drawn. Oh did you yeah. Draw? See, I don't even know that. I am like, I, I have no That's idea. That's so cool. Cause say my kids are like, <laughs> they are making they it go. It. They don't want to knit. No. And mine they don't are how, but they're so happy to have learned and abandoned it that. Mine are both lefties, and so I'm really like, I need to teach them respectfully to be left-handed knitters. And so the best way I've done that is just to be like, no, I can't do it yet. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. So if anyone, has, if anyone has like left-handed knitting tutorials for kids, tell me where to go. I do. I have someone, there's someone here in the DFW area that specializes in tutorials for left-handed knitters. I met her at a fiber fest, so I'll, I'll find that card and send it to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank My you. best friend is left-handed and I tried to teach her to knit and she was doing it mainly for me. She wanted to, you know, like knit and I, yeah. she's left-handed and I tried thinking, it, it just all was like clumsy for her. She had a, she had a really hard time yeah. with it and I yeah. know it's a better way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I really I love how you it. said she, she wanted to knit for me because that's so <laughs> You wanted to like show support and, and care about something that I care about and, and actually my best friend did that she started knitting and I was like her tension she's got the tightest tension I've ever seen like she needs socks on huge needles because everything's like tight so free. but she did she started knitting for me that's oh so nice. <laughs> that's precious <laughs> so do, we, do you have some fiber and are you adding fiber to your stash for uh to in preparation for spinning I did, I did buy fiber before the wheel arrived in my province. Yes, I did. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Ruth is, Ruth is being um, encouraging in the comments. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> you can do it. Thank Ruth, you. Ruth has a, has a pestle of kids too. So she's, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> well, and, and they love, like, I think it's something like driving, right? I get them to press the sewing machine wheel too, or sewing machine pedal too. They like that. I don't know mm -hmm. what the deal is about the pedal, but they like a pedal. It's uh, rhythmic, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right. So more more cue is what tools do you use in your work? So what do you use to edit with? Uh, what's your favorite editing? Like, what do you what do you revert to? You do Word or PDF or? I'm pretty I'm pretty old school. So I mean, it's all about Excel, and it doesn't really matter what the doc is. Mm -hmm. I don't think not as much um I would like if I had word I think and track changes and all that stuff but right now it's mostly google doc just because it's it's free and it's what I have on my computer but um hey all the power to you because I have a hard time <laughs> with google docs because I, it's I, not I, great it's not great and I really uh, this is I, I really like being empowered to kick someone out of a document and being like you know what you're what? just you're yeah. just a you're a viewer now, you're not the editor because I have edited this 10 times and I know what I've read. And if you come in and change it again, then I can't say that I've edited this. I have to read the whole thing again. And that's however many hours it took to read again. I have a really hard time with Google Docs. I can't tell so what it's, it's done. The, it's the permissions. And also you got to go back and look at history because you can go and look at history, right? Yes. So you can go back and say like, this is what it looked like three months ago when we started. And this was in there and I did edit this and then someone's like, oh, I accept that change is fine or ignore. They, like they, can, it. Yeah. they can ignore comment. No, well, they, they totally probably did ignore it. And I can be like, look, I, I said that this was a problem and you were fine with it, but I'm changing it back. So, yeah, it's like a, you really need to talk to your designer or your publication or whatever 50 people are in a document about who has control and who... Who can say, oh yeah, that's fine, that doesn't matter, or 
yes, we do want to make sure that we keep an eye on this. So and all like, together, how you're going to manage that editing process. Like, yeah, 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 because I'm, I'm responsible. We're all responsible for it, right? We're mm -hmm. all responsible for the for the product that goes out or the pattern that goes out. And if if my mom p picks up that pattern and she ends up with three sleeves, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. But she will blame me. So. She will hold you responsible, though. <laughs> So, so how do you communicate this, this, uh, who's responsible for the, that per particular part of the pattern? Do you like email them and say, stay out of it for this week? Or do you uh, like talk? Sometime, no, sometimes I just say, nope, this is, you are a viewer or a commenter and that's it. And I just do, you, do it. Do you do that in Google Docs? You can yes. If you yes, don't you own can. the document. Oh. Uh, it depends. It depends. If if you're not the owner, but you are an editor, and someone else is in there, and they are all they also have editing permission. But you know, I mean, they're possibly it's a test knitter, right. possibly it's the designer, and your publication is the owner. You can go in there and like, again, you can do it. Empower yourself, and and you can even say, listen, I'm in here right now. I am. I'm live in this document. I'm going to be doing it for the next two days. I'm kicking everyone out. I mean, why not? I you, could, you should be able to do that, right? Well, yeah, because that was disconcerting the first time I worked in Google Docs. And I'm Things editing, changing. and then I'm watching the designer work behind me. And I'm like, ah! no. <laughs> no. So whenever and I've done it, it's been like, I'm going to do this. I'll email you when I'm through with it. Yeah. And yeah. then and I don't touch it again until they email me back. But I don't like that I lose. I have to print it out every time because I don't know what I history you can go into history. It's up at the top and it says last edited two minutes ago. You click on that oh. and then it'll say, or I think it's a well, right click and it'll say, like it says see changes open version history. Yes. And I can't see from before. Yes. You, you know, can. You know what I'm saying? Oh, see, I, I just, then it's just, Christina, we can issues, you and yeah. Serena need to have a little tete a tete after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rest and she it is good. Or, or you know what? I just save the whole thing and it's on my drive and it's yeah. in Google Docs and it's mine. But that's why PDFs are nice. But then they don't change everything. And I hate that. I hate that, like, there's a comma missing again. Like, it's a, yeah. they don't want to pay me for that time. And I, yeah. I don't have that time in my life for those tiny little things, but they drive me crazy. Those tiny little, things. I, and I'm with you, especially when the comma appears and then on the next version, it's gone. And then it's there again. And then the parentheses are smashed together and then they're not together. And you're like, what are you doing? I don't know. What version are you like, working in? I still like it. Is, yeah. I like yeah. it so much better. And even in Google, like, you have to attach a comment to something, right? I don't know. I I've had a lot of. I've, I feel like I've got better control over what's happening, and they get everything. You know, what I mean? have a, that's going to be missing, or I've know. had a lot of problems with Google, with PDFs, not people not seeing the comments. Oh, like, like some of your notes don't show up, or the, or they're like, oh, I missed them. Like it says that there's 80 notes, but they like deal with four things and send it back, and I'm like, I don't. Oh. Want it. I don't want to do 80 notes again. That uh, yeah. happened to me when I was using, um, I, when I first started tech editing, I tried using iAnnotate on oh. an iPad. And okay. it was a nightmare because none of, lots of my edits didn't come through in the yeah. email. They wouldn't get it. But the PDF exchange I've been using since then, I don't have any trouble with it. Okay. And well, I love it. I used to be on my husband's apples because he would be in the office and it was great and I would do everything. And then as soon as the pandemic hit, I had to be on a laptop that was a Microsoft and I was like, oh, I don't know what's happening in it. Yeah. So that's when I, that's kind of when the PDF stopped working for me was when I was Google docking and not on an Apple machine anymore. Yeah, so no, maybe that that's it. Sense. I do PDF exchange on PDFs. And yeah. I, have, I have a Microsoft, whatever. Okay. Well, maybe I'll try that. It's, I, I it's free. It. It but works. then also, that's that's another interesting question, right? I mean, my designers have ways that they want to work. So you do you just tell them, well, so PDF, I want a PDF. And they're like, yeah, but I'm on Google Docs. Exactly. Yeah, well, they'll, uh, they'll tell me how they want to do it. And I try to be agreeable. Um, yeah. I'll say yeah. how I prefer to do it. But if you want to do it this way, that's fine with me. And like with the Google Docs, let's just establish some parameters. Yeah. You know, of how this is going to go. But most people, I do the PDF. It's yeah. not that often that people want to do it differently. 
And I don't know why. I mean, is it that they read my website and it said that I like to annotate PDFs and so they didn't tell me what they wanted? Or am I just meeting the right people? Like, I have no idea, but. <laughs> well, and I would say, Serena, if it, if Google Docs work for you, don't change it. Do what Oh, works. yeah, no, I, I'm it. pretty. It good. Then your systems get home. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty easy going, but I have one designer that sends everything in landscape. Do you guys have a lot of that happening? Uh, I have one one who does that it's it's a new thing i think i don't know or like columns which is fascinating to me but I, I mean i i don't like it but i deal with it but they're hard to read yes they can be especially if you because the print can be really small so then yeah. you still have to look at each page which is a half of a landscape which can yeah. be zooming in zooming out maybe zooming ask them to send you a draft not in their layout so you can just edit it without before it's in the layout and then you will be able to see everything better because probably yeah. rating it that way, right? Yeah, like, it's interesting, isn't it? it? It is interesting. It works. Uh, sometimes everybody, like you said, when you're dealing with independent designers, sometimes the style is how they build their brand. And yeah. it it's hard sometimes to fit in. But I feel like as I get to know a client and what they like, then I can like set up a system for dealing right. with their particular way of doing it. Yeah. So. It's interesting, too, because I think knitting patterns, designers try to minimize their page counts. And for sure, sewing. I've been doing some sewing testing. There is no minimization of page counts in a sewing pattern. There's like a hundred pages of stuff. Like little it's ebooks, huh? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, we have one more question. We're almost okay. to the end of our hour. Let's see here. What's your favorite knitting or crochet notion? Will it be? I'm wondering. I don't know. I don't know. I what do you know. What do you love to have? I I love stitch markers, and I can never find them. Always. I can never find them. Always. No. No. I use paper clips. I use safety pins. I use bits of thread. I can never, ever, ever find them. I I, I have them. Paper clip. <laughs> I, I buy them. What's my favorite? I like good sharp needles with smooth mm. joins. Um, like lace know. tips, huh? Like really, uh, yeah. really pointy, yeah. really, really pointy. I Last year, I broke, I don't know, three sets of circulars. And I was so, not sets, but like three pairs. Pair, right. I was so mad. But I have a lot of needles. And so I'm trying not to buy an interchangeable set, but I probably, I probably. That's will. how I've been. Okay, I've never. I have because I've, I've got all these needles now. There's no need, right? But I know. I, I did just recently buy an interchangeable set. I didn't okay. get, like every size. I got you know. Okay, what did you get? Because because I keep thinking I'll just buy a mini, like a sock set, right? I, I think a lot of research and asked a lot of people about yeah. what would be best, but I got a Chow Gu interchangeable set and I got like I think their size is three to nine or Okay. Two. But see it doesn't have uh, sock I the, needles. I got the four inch four inch needles. Okay. So they're not like super long on the needle. You know what I mean? Well, because that's where they would break, right? Where I'm holding them yeah. with my like I'm making a sweater and then right there where my finger is. I've snapped it in two. And honestly, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. You know why? An interchangeable set has been so great, not just because I have more needles, but because you can add cables. You can so, use the cables for like yeah. a stitch uh, holder or, yeah. you know, it's so useful. Um, yeah. I just really am so glad I have it. And now I just want to add needles to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to get one. I'm probably going to buy that exact I finally set. like cables. My question is, did you get rid of all your other needles? Oh, heck no. <laughs> Look at all these needles. But you do, you these needles? do you yes, use them? Yes, I use all these plus my interchangeables. I know <laughs> for sure. If I get rid of any needles, <laughs> I know that will happen. I have straight needles and I will not get rid of them, but I I don't remember the last time I used straight needles. No. I don't need them. Them. If I get rid of any needles, I'll need them. Not the straight ones, you're right. But if I get rid of a needle... I mean, that's, that's, that's three ones are in my, I, I have a needle case that was my great grandma's, like a long tube, yep. fabric tube, and I've got the straight needles in it because they're not hurting anybody and, you know, they're not taking yeah. out, like, you know, they're not, but. As soon as you get rid of it, that's when you'll need it. Exactly. No, I, like, 
This is bad. This is very bad advice. This is bad. <laughs> I have startitis. I'm, I love having lots of projects going, so I can't get rid of extra needles because then I can't start extra projects. Okay, how many whips do you have? How many? Oh, <laughs> Is it Cassie, you can do it. I've super good. I've been super good. I have four whips. Okay, that's good. I have two or three in the closet, which are those. Those are hibernating, right? Those are like someday, right? Yeah. And then I just recently frogged a whole bunch of projects. I laid them all out one day, and I was oh, like, that's "Awesome!" Honest with yourself, like it's time. This is enough. Is enough. You know what I mean? And some of them were old, but some of them were new. And I was, you know, just don't want, oh no. Okay. So there's three in the closet and then there's four out here. Okay. No, and the I three in the closet it. are not stressing me out because they're not for today. You know, Are you saying? one at a time, Sarah? No, heck no. Okay. But I don't count, but I know I have a whip <laughs> somewhere because I'm missing a needle size when I want to go start. I got another go. That's what I find. Oh, and I have one in the car. I have one in the glove box for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a pair of socks going and generally a sweater. Like I got to do the sleeves on this one. So, yep. Other than that, there's a lot of other ones. <laughs> too many, too many. Too many. I, I probably have six single socks and six toes. That's a lot of DPNs. It's a lot because I got you those tiny, those beautiful, those, those vintage arrow, those tiny skinny, like, you know, those little, they're called oh. twin pins. They're really cute. Yes. I, I have a ton of those. And so they, like, I don't knit on them, but then I just like, they're just storage needles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't count them. Yes, we don't count them. <laughs> we don't count. <laughs> I don't count. I don't need to. It's too stressful. Counting is, counting is hard. Counting is hard. But you can do it if it's gauge. You can do it. I don't know. I had to. I know Ruth's like you're. I look at you guys. You guys are the best. I love the comments. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't... had to be. I, I couldn't take it anymore. These projects were stressing me out. It was like I had all these whips and I wasn't getting anything done. And I was. I, I, yeah, I couldn't take it anymore. I laid it them is... all out and I said, "That's it. Make some decisions." And now here I am. I'm back at it, but I'm working on them all, so it's okay. All right, we better wrap this up because we've been holding people here for almost an hour. Uh, how can people find you online and are you taking new clients, Serena? Uh, I am dressed like an onion in most places and I like using Camel Case because I'm learning from Renee. So capital D, capital L, capital oh. A, capital O. Oh. Christine's gonna go retype it really quick. But that's a really good tip for all your hashtags if you're hashtagging. It just helps people read them and it makes it accessible. And we oh. like that stuff. Those it's are so good, you're right. friendly, happy words. And so I like uh, my designers to do that on their patterns too. Like if they have footers or headers or anything with that, just capitalize your name and your words. Um, I she did it. I told Yay. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. You if if you, you want to talk to me more, you can always talk to me more and find me there. I um, I am busy, but mm -hmm. I like being busy. I'm and surprised. I'm also going to be really honest with you. If I can't, I can't. And if right. we can do it later, we can. And if... You give me a day, it's probably not going to happen. But if you give me a week, it probably will happen. Um, yeah. And if you don't like me, that's okay, too. <laughs> we like you. We, no, but I mean, we don't have to be best friends, right? Like, right. we can try and I can do a pattern and you can be like, I don't like the feedback that you gave me. Yeah. Or this wasn't working or you weren't as responsive or you were too responsive. That's all fine, too. So I, just... I, I like we said, it's all about finding what fits you and the designer we aren't all meant to mesh at the same way in the same yeah it not everybody's gonna work and that's no. okay it's okay yeah. True. yeah yes absolutely well thank you so much for being with us um i think our audience really enjoyed this episode thank you for joining us serena and have a great week everybody yes thanks for coming on i love talking to you <laughs> see you thank later you. Bye. bye have a good week bye all right, and let me move you back here. All right, what are our announcements for this week, for this month? Um, reading comments. Join us on Patreon. Yes. 
Are so, you have audience on Patreon? Here you um, go. Our Patreon uh, is the way that we keep the lights on here at Tech Tip Talk. Uh, we are super grateful to all our patrons who support us and make this um, this broadcast possible. Um, we have a private network for all of our patrons, and we have a lot of fun chatting over there. And we have knit nights. Twice a month. Twice a month where you get us for a whole hour, just like this, where we can knit together online and video chat together. It's a lot of fun. Um, and what else? What else we got? Well, we have to remind people to subscribe here if they haven't and sign up for our newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, our newsletter is the best way to find out about broadcast, the last mm -hmm. one, the next one. It's a great way to find out about any updates about our book that we're writing or to get our free download if you don't have it yet of the um the pre-edit checklist that we put together for you guys so sign up for our newsletter subscribe to us on youtube so you don't miss anything that's a good idea to do that and sarah do you want to tell about the new update about the book i mean we do we are moving along sure. with that yeah we are moving along so uh update on our book is that we have completed our developmental edit stage which is like the big picture stuff and moving paragraphs around um, and we're going to be entering into the copy editing stage, which is very exciting to be on this side of the editing desk for that. Oh, my God, uh, you guys, so much work. <laughs> periods and commas and all that. We are working on, should we tell them what we're working yeah, on? Yeah, we're okay. working on sizing standards. And um, we've completed some of it and some of it we're still working on. So yeah, our publisher has asked us to make a sizing standard for our book as a reference for all of our readers, uh, women's, men's, and children, which is a lot of work. So we're trying to pull together all that uh, this week is actually when it's due. So Ooh. it's and it's something we've been thinking about too. So mm -hmm. it, it works out that that's what they want. So we, that's what we're working on this week. And uh, we'd like you to join us next month, June 20th, uh, same time and third Monday. Uh, and we're super excited to host another exciting guest, <laughs> which we'll have more information for you shortly. Anything else? I don't think so. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for joining us. We're super excited that you could be with us here today. Uh, feel free to send us any questions that you have between now and June, and we'll do our best to answer them. We'll see you next month. See you next month.